Okay, so we've got one more example left from this chapter. So let's finish it up. This is problem 4.6, zero. And it's a pulley problem, which is good because you've got a stack of these on your homework. So here's what it tells us. It tells us we know the coefficients of kinetic and static friction. So this one right here, this is mu s. And this one right here, this is mu k. Okay, what we know is right there and right here. Now, first question is, is it gonna move? It's a yes, no question. If it was uh, on WebAssign, you'd have two boxes. You'd have a yes box and a no box, and you can have a 50-50 shot. You got four tries to get it. You'll get the answer, I guarantee. It's not too hard to figure out. You just try one, if it doesn't work, try the other one. You got four tries in every shot, but you can do better than that. You need to know why you got the answer. This goes back to what we said on the first day. Don't forget, your job here, on the homework especially, is not to get the answer. Your job is to know why the answer is what it is. So let's step through this step by step and figure out this 50-50 shot answer, okay? Why is it the way it is? So <clears throat> what we need to do here, these pulley problems, there's two ways to do it. There's the easy to do way and the easy to understand way. So today, I'm gonna to show you the easy to understand way. I'll show you the easy to do way some other time, okay? But for now, let me show you the easy to understand way because right now I really want you to understand it. So, <clears throat> let's look at this as our object. Remember in Newton's second law where it says the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration, we're talking about the sum of the forces on an object. And I'm gonna choose this as my object. So I need to know all the forces that are on this object. Well, you look at it and you say, well, it's on planet Earth. You're right, so it must have weight. Force of gravity is pulling it down. And how much is it pulling it down with? 100 newtons. Because it told us its weight right here. Okay, well, why doesn't it go down? Well, the reason it doesn't go down is because there's a table there pushing it back. That means there must be a normal force pushing it back up. Okay, well, this thing here that's a rope. And I know ropes always pull in the direction they are, so this rope is going to be pulling it this way. We're going to call that T. Well, the problem tells us there's friction involved, both static and kinetic. So we know we're going to have, this thing's going to want to move this way. You can just look at the picture and tell that. Whether it's in motion or about to move, it's trying to go this way. So we've got friction, and that's going to oppose it, and there's a force of friction there. Okay, so let's look in the y direction. If we add up the forces in the y direction, let me write that over here. Some of the forces in the y direction, this adds up to mass times acceleration in the y direction. Now here's my question for you. Looking at that box, sitting on the table, is that box going to go through the table or leap up straight up off the table? Of course the answer is no. This thing does not accelerate in the y direction, so the answer here is zero. So all the forces in the y direction, which is normal force going up, you can look at the picture over here, normal force going up and force of gravity going down, these two have to add up to zero. So we've got normal force up, that's positive, minus the force of gravity going down have to add up to zero. Okay, so what are they? Well, the normal force, that's the thing we don't know yet, we gotta figure that out. I'm gonna add force of gravity to the other side. So this is gonna add up to the force of gravity, but we already are told in the problem that the force of gravity is 100. So we now know the normal force by adding up the forces in the y direction, okay? This doesn't answer our question, but it's useful information. Now let's go back over here. Our question is, will the system move? Now this makes a fundamental assumption. It's assuming that it's not moving yet. Will the system move? Means it's currently not moving, but it might start. You have to figure out, will it start, okay? So assuming that it's not moving yet, which is what the question is implying, that means we're in the static friction regime. It's not moving, that means static, okay? So this is force of friction static. Well, what is the maximum force of friction static? Well, you can look it up on your equation sheet, or you might remember from what we talked about the other day, that the force of friction static is always less than or equal to 
mu times n. Mu s times n, the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Well, guess what? We just figured out the normal force. So the force of friction static is always less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction, which was given as 0.49 times the normal force, which we just calcul calculated, is 100. That means this is always less than or equal to 49. Okay? So the force of friction static is 49 newtons. Less than or equal to 49 newtons. Let me say this again a different way. This is the maximum possible force that static friction can stop. If, if the tension in the rope that's pulling it the other way is 49 or less, it's not moving. It's stuck. But if it's more than 49, it's going to move because that's going to be enough to break this. Okay, so let's go back and see if we can figure out what the tension in the string is. Okay? So just looking at this picture, we can't figure out what the tension in the string is. But we notice that this string also goes around the pulley and is attached to this guy here. So now let's do a whole new problem where this is our object. We've got a new object over here. Okay? So let's identify the forces on this object. We've got a force pulling it down because it's on planet Earth. This is the force of gravity pulling it down. And how much is that? That's 50 newtons. The problem tells it to you right here. Okay? And we've got tension in the rope pulling it up. Well, this rope is the same rope. So this tension and this tension, they have to be the same thing. They are the same thing because it's the same rope and we're assuming at least for this chapter, that this is one of those beautiful pulleys that is both massless and frictionless. I know in real life these don't exist, but for the purposes of this book, at least for these first few chapters, we're going to assume this is massless and frictionless. Why, you might ask. That's, you might say, this is why I hate physics. Ugh. Always dealing with these situations that aren't real. Ugh. I don't, it's useless to me. Here's why we're doing this. <clears throat> My job is to teach you how to describe reality with this language we call math. The problem is, is that reality is very complex. So we have to start simple, get you to understand basic ideas to start with, and then slowly, as you understand those ideas, I'll introduce a little bit more complications and we'll move closer and closer to reality. So this is one of those complicating factors that makes life very difficult, and I'll teach you that a few chapters down the road. But for now, let's just pretend it's a beautiful pulley that is ma massless and frictionless, which means that both this tension and this tension have to be the same. Now, once you introduce friction or mass here, we can't make that assumption anymore. But for now, we can. So this T and this T are the same. Well, you've already done this a couple times, right? You've probably already figured it out in your head. Hey, some of the forces in the Y direction, we're assuming, will the system move? We're assuming it's not moving yet. If this force of friction is enough to hold this in place, then this isn't going to move either. And if that's the case, then this tension and this tension have to add up to zero. I'm sorry, this tension and this weight have to add up to zero, which means that this tension is 50, which means that this tension is 50, and the maximum that this can hold is 49. Oh, this is 50, that's 49. The maximum over here is 49. This is more than this. Therefore, will the system move? Yes, it has to move. Okay, so the answer to this first question is, Yes, it moves. Okay? Now, let's start a new problem. <laughs> we figured out, does it move? The answer is yes, because this tension, even if it's static, is more than the maximum force of friction static. So now, we've assumed, we've let go, and it is now moving with broken static friction, and now we're going to have kinetic friction here. It's going to be, it will, will still resist it, but with kinetic friction, not static, because now it's moving. Well, now this tension is no longer 50 because this thing is also, this whole system is going to accelerate now. So this is not static anymore. In other words, this no longer equals that. Hmm. Well, this gets messy. How do we figure that out? Well, let's, let's do that. Let me clear off some board space over here, and I'll show you. Let's deal with just this piece over here 
first. Just this piece down here. We're going to say that the force going down is its weight, and the tension is going up, and we don't know the tension. Okay? So, uh, some of the forces, we're only going to deal with the y direction because it doesn't move x, <clears throat> is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, we're just dealing with this tan object over here, this tan block. Okay, just this tan one down here. So I'm going to label that tan up here. Okay? I'm not talking about tangent, I'm talking about the tan block. Color tan is off a light brown, okay? So the sum of the forces on that is its weight, which the problem tells us is 50 newtons, which is going down, and the tension, which is going up, so this one gets a negative sign, this one gets a positive sign, has to equal the mass of this object. What's our object? Just this tan object. We don't know its mass. The problem didn't tell us its mass. The problem told us its weight. But you remember that weight is mass times gravity. So <clears throat> we can figure out the mass. It's going to be 50 divided by gravity. Okay? Times acceleration. So we're going to look at this and we're going to say, huh, that's one equation with two unknowns. Oh, man. That doesn't answer the question. Algebra says, the rules of algebra say, you have to have as many equations as you do unknowns. I've got two unknowns here, that means I need two equations. So where am I going to get my second equation? That, for that equation, you're going to go back to this one. And you can look at this and you're going to say, okay, this tension is pulling it this way. This force is pulling it that way. We don't care about these two because these are in the y direction. Let's only deal with the x direction. This block, this blue block, is only going to slide left or right. It's not going to go up or down. So these two don't matter to us so much. It's these two that we care about. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to write it all out. So this is going to be for the blue block. Okay? So pulling things pulling to the right is going to be tension. Things pulling it to the left are going to be force of friction, kinetic. And remember, this is an, we know this equation. Okay? And this is going to be equal to the mass of the blue block. Mass of the blue block, which is going to be 100 over 9.81. Again, the problem didn't tell us the mass. It told us its weight. So to get the mass, we've got to divide it by 9.8. So this is going to be mass times acceleration. Um, okay, so let's plug in some numbers here. We remember that the force of friction for kinetic is going to be mu k times the normal force, both of which numbers we know, is equal to 100 over 9.81 times a. Let's plug in those numbers. Tension minus 0.32 times 100 equals 100 over 9.8 times a. Now look at that. Two equations. This one and this one. Two equations, two unknowns. Ah, we can do this now. Physics, at this point, is done. It's a little bit tricky, not too bad. This is what we've done so far. This is the class. This is what this is all about. I've, students have told me in the past, they said, ah, oh, physics is so hard. I just have such a hard time setting it up. Once it's set up, I can do the math. I don't want to hear that from y'all because, of course you can do the math. That was a different class. Setting it up, that's the physics, okay? So, yes, you should have trouble setting it up because this is what's new. This is what you have to learn. That's the tricky part about this class. You've got to figure that out. Getting this far, this is the trick, okay? So, it's okay. You can tell that to me. <clears throat> but remember, that's the part you need to learn, how to set it up. That's where, that's where the physics is. Okay, so now let's do the algebra. Let's figure this out. Uh, we got to solve one of these for either tension or acceleration, and then plug it into the other one. Uh, they both look about the same to me. Um, let's take this one. Let's solve this one for T. So I'll use blue. I'm going to add 50 to the other side. So tension is going to be equal to 50 divided by 9.81 times acceleration plus 50, okay? 
Now I'm going to take this equation right here and I'm plug it in right there for tension. Okay, so I'm going to take that thing over there and plug it in right here for tension. And now let's write that out. Okay, so I'll use green for that. Okay, so I'm going to have 50 over 9.81 times acceleration plus 50. Okay, that was all tension. Okay, minus the rest of this. Uh, I'm going to do that in my head. That's just 32. You better be able to do that in your head too. Equals 100 over 9.81 times A. Okay. So now we're going to solve this. I'm going to, we're going to combine like terms here, right? 50 minus 32 is here. Our, the, this piece that has the acceleration, we have to subtract that to the other side. I can do 50 minus 32 in my head, I think. Let's see. Shouldn't that be 18? Uh, so we've got 18 here minus uh, is equal to 100 over 9.81 times A minus this piece over here minus 50 over 9.81 a. And you notice we can pull we can pull the acceleration right out of that. So I'm going to carry it down one more step. 18 is equal to let's see 100 minus 50 divided by 9.81. They have common denominators times acceleration. Let me carry this oh, up here. So I'm going to have 18, uh, we're going to have to multiply both sides by 9.81 and divide both sides by 100 minus 50. And this is equal to A. There's a couple steps in my head, but I think you all can keep up. Give it a try. Work it out step by step on your paper. Don't skip the steps on your paper. Make sure that you know how to do it. If you have, if you have questions, that's when you talk to me on the, on the, on the Skype time or Google time or whatever is we use here. Okay? Uh, and so now you just punch these buttons in your calculator and you get an answer. And uh, that answer, let's see, that answer is 18 times 9.81 uh, divided by 50. So we get an answer. Acceleration is 3.532. meters per second squared. So that's how fast this thing is going to accelerate. In which way will it accelerate? So let's go back over and look at our picture. So the question is, how fast and which way? Well, based on all the math that we did, it's going to accelerate this way. We know it this way because we said everything to the right is positive and our answer was positive. Of course, you can look at it and tell the answer too. It's going to go this way. The answer is 5 point, I'm sorry, 3.5 meters per second squared to the right. Okay? Next question. What is the tension in the string? Okay? That's easy because now we've already done this question. We've already solved this problem. Now we can go back to either this equation or this equation and just plug in our answer to get tension. So, we'll punch that in here. Let's see. We've got uh, 50 divided by 9.81 times 3.532 plus 50, and we get tension is 68.00. So there we go. That's the last problem from chapter 4. At this point, you know how to do, let me try that again. You've seen all the tools you need to finish this chapter. So you should be able to accomplish all the whole chapter, the whole homework set. This is a foundational chapter, so make sure you understand this chapter. Don't just get the answers by hook or crook. Make sure you also know how to get the answers. Why are the answers the way they are? Because that's what you've got to be able to do on the test. Okay? Have a good day.